Hey, what's going on, people? My name is Terrell Andretti, and I'm the Narx Nemesis. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It helps YouTube's algorithm pick up this content and push it out to more people. Somebody liked it for you, so make sure you like it for somebody. Um, if you want a one-on-one -on -one phone session, the link is in the description. If you're looking for it today or tomorrow, you will have to email me. The email is in the description. So y'all make sure y'all let me know. Um, if you want to donate to the channel, the link is also in the description. Um, I got two singles out called Superstition and Masquerade. They are both about my narcissistic experience. Superstition features a voicemail of my ex narc trying to hoover me, and I ain't going for it. Masquerade is more about her popping up after a certain period of time and basically trying to act like she's a whole nother person and what we've been through didn't exist. They're both available here on the channel and they are also available on all streaming platforms. Y'all make sure y'all go check those songs out. Leave me some feedback on the channel. Uh, share them with a friend. Use them on TikTok, do whatever. Help me push that, push those songs out. I think they're really great songs on the subject and I'm also telling my story on both of them. So if y'all are interested, go check those out. Stay your ass off their social media. If you need a t-shirt, the t-shirt is also, the link is in the description, so y'all go check that out. But anyway, today I want to talk to y'all about them having a new supply does not mean that they're over you or that they've moved on. I'm going to tell y'all, we live in a distraction-based society and what i mean by that is instead of people going to heal instead of people going to find their uh inner peace and working on their childhood trauma they go find fucking distractions a lot of people including us stay in relationships to distract us from the fucking work that we really need to be doing a lot of people go get in these relationships Especially with, you know, these people that match their trauma or on their same frequency, which is often, if you're not healed, a low vibration. So a lot of people, let's say I tell all my guys, go get in the gym. A lot of guys I know will go get in a relationship with a woman that doesn't require them to be in the gym. Because that distracts them from having to do the work because the person that they're with does not require them to be better than they are supposed to be. Now, I'm not saying you're supposed to walk around this motherfucker built like Kurt Angle, but what I am saying is every guy, and I'm speaking for my guys, every guy should be in the fucking gym. I don't want to hear that shit about I work, I do this because I do the same thing. Because you made time for that narc, make time to tighten your ass up. Go to the fucking gym. All my ladies, y'all need to be in the gym in some way, shape, or form. Health is fucking wealth. That's why a lot of people can't heal because y'all have too much time on your hands. If you go to the gym and you push your body beyond your limits, you don't have time to go fucking check on their page or go see what the fuck they doing or worry about if they healing or moved on or not. Go to the fucking gym. A lot of people... No, they're supposed to be starting a business. They're supposed to be writing a book. So they'll go jump into a relationship with somebody who doesn't require that out of them. It's a distraction. Because, you know, if you go get with somebody who doesn't require that out of you, you can avoid, at least until that relationship is over, the work that you need to be doing. Some of y'all know you need to go to therapy. And I'm not just saying us. I'm saying narcissistic people as well. You know you need to be going to therapy. So you will go get in a relationship with somebody who doesn't require you to go to therapy because they don't give a fuck about their childhood trauma either. So that allows you to escape the responsibility of it too. Narcissists do this shit to a T. A lot of times they don't leave you because you weren't, it's really never because you weren't good enough. The thing is, narcissists have a certain capacity that they can allow that they can give to you in a relationship. If you ever noticed, 
the peak of the relationship stops at a certain point. It'll stop and then it'll start over from the beginning. Stop, start over. It never goes past a certain point. That's because narcissists lack emotional depth. They lack character. They lack integrity. They can only go as far as they have mimicked somebody else. I'll say that again. Narcissists can only go as far with you as they have mimicked you. And you already know you can't really copy the original like that. You can only do to some degree. You ever seen in the movies where they make a clone of somebody or an evil clone or whatever? The clone always has some kind of weakness that the original does not have. The narcissist has a weakness in depth and they know they can only go a certain distance with you. So a lot of y'all, let's say they've been hyping up marriage, right? They've been talking this shit about getting married, sending you wedding pictures, sending you fucking tuxedos and fucking uh, wedding dresses and quinceanera dresses and all that bullshit there. They've been sending you all of this shit, trying to get you in the, um, you know, in the mindset of getting married, right? So when you finally go grab the ring and you want to set everything up, they'll cause an argument out of nowhere to disrupt that. Why do y'all think that is? Because selling you the idea of marriage is more beneficial to them than actually going through with the marriage because they don't have the death to be a husband. They don't have the death to be a wife. So if they get to that point and they're, they're not deep enough to be that person to extract more supply out of you, they're gonna do the next best thing. They're gonna only wanna sell you the dream of what you really want. Because to be honest, they're not capable of being the person that it requires to be what you really want out of a partner. They don't have it. They'll show you bits and pieces, but that's to sell you on the idea that it's possible because us being impasse, all we need is a mustard seed size worth of fucking faith and shit. We're going to go to the moon and the stars for it. They know that. But what you have to understand is you got to start watching people's actions. You got to start checking out people's intentions. Like, okay, you say you want to be a wife or a husband, but what are you actually doing in this relationship to become that? besides feeding me little scraps, little breadcrumbs. Cause I see a lot of this, um, I see a lot of this shit too, and it's not bashing women cause I say the same shit for the men. I'm not acting like a wife until I become a wife. Or I'm not acting like a husband until I become a husband. That is the stupidest shit I've ever heard in my life. Because if you aren't already acting in that energy, I'm not finna roll the dice and take it. Oh, well, she might be a great wife because I haven't seen the proof in that yet, but I think she'll be a good wife. Let me roll it. It ain't gonna happen. And if you if it does, you're gonna end up with a buster that you're gonna resent and you're gonna end up hating. Fellas, same thing with you. Oh, I'm not gonna be a husband until she put a ring on it. If I'm dealing with you, and you're not exhibiting characteristics of what I want and what I need out of a partner and what I see myself with, you won't make it to my motherfucking future. Take it to the bank. You ain't gotta like it, I don't give a damn, but I'm telling you the truth. The thing is, you can operate in that, you can operate like a wife. You can operate like a husband. But when you see that they're not reciprocating, that's when you withdraw that shit. Not thinking that you're entitled automatically. I don't know how I got here, but I felt y'all needed to hear it, but whatever. But anyway, the narcissist cannot go past that point of which they've been breadcrumbing you. That's why they never live up to your expectations because they know they can't. They've been talking all this shit about becoming a wife, becoming a husband, all this shit. And then when it's finally time to set the stage, an argument magically happens out of fucking nowhere. 
Y'all magically get into it out of fucking nowhere. And you're like, damn, where did that come from? That's because they need to escape. Because now you're going to start demanding more from them than they were willing to give. See, the narcissist wants to get as much out of you without giving much. Or giving the least amount possible while getting the most out of you. That's why when it's time to really show up and show out, they can't show up for you. Because they don't have the capacity to. And we refuse to see it because we're so blinded by what they showed us in the beginning. Not recognizing they've only shown up to a certain point. Then it'll stop. Then it'll start from the beginning. They go to that point. It'll stop. And then it'll start from the beginning. They cannot go past that point. And you have to recognize that. Some of y'all been with these motherfuckers 20, 30, 40 years. And they only went past the six month death for 20, 30 years. They can't go past what they were willing to give you within a six month mark. But the cycle keeps repeating itself, but it always stops at that point. That's why y'all been with these people for years and you seem like, well, damn, they just, as soon as they about to get it right, they stop. And it's always, if you pay attention, they always stop at the same point. When you start expecting more out of them, they run away because they know they're not capable of really being what you deserve from them. And we'll get it twisted and we'll think it's us. Nah, it ain't you. They can't live up to your expectations, but expect you to live up to theirs. See, they be wanting their cake and eat it too while you sitting over there hungry. It don't work like that. And they know this shit, but that's why they run off. See, they'll run off to the new supply because the new supply don't expect much of them. They just met these motherfuckers. They don't know that they're a narcissist. Um, the new supply, they ain't been in no arguments yet. So it ain't no, nah, I don't like that. I expect you to come at me like this. It, it, there's no expectations because it's the beginning again. See, they'll leave you to go with somebody else who's more naive to their bullshit because if somebody's naive to their bullshit, they're going to expect less out of them. You ever notice when you got on their ass about something or you really pressed the line about something, they kind of pull back because they like, whoa, you expect something out of me? Hold on, I can't, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I'll never forget toward the beginning of the relationship my ex narc had a habit of talking about her ex-boyfriends now if we're having a mutual conversation about exes cool but i am not the guy to sit and communicate with you about your exes to unless i'm helping you through a traumatic experience or something like that and really their therapist for that i don't want to hear about your fucking exes all day every day and i had to correct her and tell her you have an aunt, you have a mom, you have a sister, and you have homegirls who you can get on the phone with and discuss your exes all fucking day. I'm not him. And she told me, well, you're not the first person who told me that. And that's a red flag, too, but I wasn't paying attention because it's early. Well, you're not the first person who told me that. I understand, yada, 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 and I got you. But she had... I think she had ghosted me for the rest of the day. Or it could have been two days. I think it was like two days. Now, I'm combating this shit and not even knowing that I'm combating it because first off, if I'm talking to you and you ghost me, you won't hear from me until you reach out. That's, that's it is what it is. Because I'm busy too, motherfucker. So, I guess she called herself ghosting me for two days. And of course, I'm thinking about her and I want to reach out, but I'm not. And I'm not even putting in, you know, two and two together that, um, you know, she ghosted me because, you know, I corrected her. I'm going to tell y'all some other bullshit she tried to sell me. She's Muslim, right? Like the whole head wrap, all that shit at work, you know, Muslim. So Ramadan was coming up. 
Mind you, I don't know too much about this religion or culture or nothing like that. So she told me that during Ramadan, and I don't know if this is true or not, if, if it is or if it's not, y'all can correct me in the comments. She told me during Ramadan, she can't talk to people who aren't Muslim or whatever the case is. So I would have to go 30 days without talking to her. And I was like, damn, how does that normally work for other dudes or whatever the case is? But I was like, okay, I respect her religion because I don't know shit about it. And I'm pretty sure this shit ain't true. And, you know, Ramadan comes up. And I think that's when she had ghosted me for the like little two days. I'm like, shit, I'm not hitting you up. I'm respecting your religion. And then if you disappear, I'm not chasing behind you. You will hear from me when you reach out. And fucking, she couldn't stay away. I guess maybe she had another supply or whatever. And he just wasn't cutting it. So she ended up talking to me during this period anyway. But um, damn, how did I get here? Cause y'all know I don't take no notes. I be freestyling, but um, fuck, I really lost my train of thought. But anyway, they'll tell you some shit. Okay, the whole y'all forgive me. That's how y'all know this is real raw and uncut. Cause I ain't got no motherfucking notes. Okay, I got to the point of when you correct them, and they want to go deal with somebody who doesn't correct them, because when you correct somebody about how to treat you. That's setting a boundary. Narcissists don't like boundaries, so that ran her ass off. And ultimately, this is one of the reasons why we ended up breaking up for good because the motherfucker named and popped up in conversations and text messages and phone calls at midnight throughout the relationship, uh, which ultimately led to a part of the relationship's demise. And I told, I think I told the story on the channel. Um, if not, I'll make a separate video for that. But they run off to people who hold them less accountable. That's why you will see them downgrade because people that look good, people that got their shit together, people that are, uh, you know, have standards, have boundaries and shit like that, they gonna check you. They gonna be on your ass about certain shit. They not gonna allow certain shit. Especially, you know, when we snap out of this shit and we get our mind back right, you gonna have some boundaries after this. They don't like boundaries. So they go run to somebody lesser that might even look lesser than you because they're going to require less because they're gonna feel lucky to even be talking to that person. So they're not gonna check them. They're not gonna speak up. They're not gonna hold them accountable and they're not gonna have no nuts. And you know what I'm saying? They're not gonna um, have no heart as far as checking them. That's why they go deal with these lower individuals because they want people that expect and demand less out of them. The thing is, they are attracted to people like us that look good and, you know, our light, our kindness and everything like that. That's what they're really attracted to. But when they get close enough and they figure out, oh, well, I can't control this like I want to, then they got to revert back to something on their level. But that's honestly not where they want to be. Because who don't want the best of the best? Even if you can control that over there, you still want the best of the best. So anyway, I know I kind of went in and out, but none of the information was wasted because I feel like y'all need to hear all that. Uh, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure y'all go check out those two singles for me. Leave me some uh, feedback on the channel. Um, share it, send it to a friend, whatever. Also, um, Stay your ass off their social media. If you need a t-shirt, the link is in the description. Um, Y'all got to really protect yourself against these jackass Supremes with extra cheese because they out here. So protect yourself. Um, if you need a one-on-one, -on -one, the link is in the description. If you need one today or tomorrow, make sure you email me and I can fit you in. Um, other than that, another day, another way. And you ain't got to listen but I know you heard me.